The human is a relatively new test and there's a lot of resources online uh, saying that you should buy them. I'm here to tell you that you shouldn't buy most of them. And more than that, I wanna give you a roadmap so you know, based on your needs, what you should and shouldn't get. Before going into the, like, the actual video, I do wanna make it clear that I'm not actually selling anything. Please, please, please don't waste your money on stuff you don't need. I've been where you are looking at the test, wanting to succeed, but not knowing what to get, what not to get, how to study. And um, I'm not selling you any of these things unless you feel like you need them, which is what the last part of the video is about. Personally, I found that there are three main types of resources available for the human. The first one I'm gonna talk about is books. The second one is online courses. And the third is past papers. On books, I found that there are three main um, books that people recommend. I didn't use any of these books, so this is all information I've heard from my classmates that did get in and from what other people used to study to get in or to do well in the HUMAT. The first one I've heard the most about from my classmates and people that got in is the UK CAT book. It's full of exercises for the UK entrance exam tour to medical schools, not specifically tailored to the HUMAT, but it is if you're training that part of the test, it is the book I recommend the most or I have recommended the most even if I didn't use it myself. The second one is the BMAT books, which is also for the UK. It's a bit more niche, but it's also for medical schools in the UK. I think that the UK CAT books are basically the same and people seem to be more comfortable using those and recommending those, which is what I also do. So if you want um, books, UK CAT book number one, BMAT two, uh, book number two. And on Amazon, there's also a third book that's like the Humanitas Complete book to like get into medical school whatever specifically tailored to humanitas i haven't bought it I, I read through it i skimmed through it not a good book don't buy it i don't think it's worth it stick to the uk cat books from what i saw not worth it just stick to the uk cat books it's much more worth your money secondly we have the online courses humanitas university offers this official online course uh, for 700 euros i didn't take it but a few of my classmates did and they got in and so i'm gonna cut to them now talking about it and giving us their experience uh hi i'm a second year medical school student francesca gentini and i participated to the umet course before actually trying the test and i would not recommend it according to how much you spend for it and how much material you get but i think it is a good overview on what actually test is because we do have two simulations but they're literally not the same thing they're much easier than what you ex what you're expecting actually if you could obtain something else from someone else honestly from older years it would be much better than actually doing the humat course so the humat prep week i took it like before doing the humat um, test and it was helpful because i didn't have any other like guidance to it no other like platform no other um, like practice tests or any kind of like hint to what it, what it was going to be so it was good in hind but in hindsight it was more like it took too much of my time for me i used more of the ucat and like based off my preparation for that which, which i found way more like helpful way more effective so i wouldn't really recommend it and there's way better resources available outside I believe that the UMAT Preparation Week was not uh, organized at its best, in particular with respect of the amount of money we have to pay to uh, participate. In particular because it was really focused on math, physics, biology and chemistry. I mean, despite, except for the weekends, we only worked about these subjects, uh, which were not actually requested in the UMAT test, but uh, only in the test for um, math tech course. So uh, I believe there should be a stronger focus on what is actually requested on uh, the UMAT test, which is actually very close to the uh, BMAT, I believe, which is basically what I, the kind of resources I used to prepare for the UMAT, and I passed. Now, regardless of whether that swayed you in one direction or the other, 700 euros is a lot of money to spend on an online course, which is why there is an alternative I found, which is the studymed.it course. Um, it's 455 euros, which is still not an impulse buy. It's a lot of money, but they seem to offer the same thing as the Humanitas official course. I've, um, okay, I'm working with them. They gave me a discount code, which is my name, and you get 10% off. And before I felt comfortable talking about them online, I reached out to tutors, to students, and I asked them for access to the product itself. And it looks really good. It looks really complete. They have a lot of hours worth of stuff. They also have like a different, like a different package with one-to-one -one tutoring. 
I think the only drawback to this course is the price tag, which is 455 euros, 410 if you use my, my, my code, but the, the content looks good. Everybody that I talked to was really happy using it. I talked to the guy that runs it. And overall, this is a course I do, after all the research I did, would feel comfortable recommending. But let's talk about the third and the most useful, in my opinion, at least at a baseline level, the most useful resources, which is past papers or test papers. There's two sets of past papers on the website, which you should definitely know about. And then if you send me an email to this email over here, I can get you a couple more test papers for, um, for free. And that's basically all the test papers we have available to us as aspirants. But I personally believe since these are the best free resources available to us, that's what we should start with. Um, there's also exactly what you need in the first step of the roadmap. So let's talk about the roadmap. The roadmap starts by you doing a test paper under exam conditions, which means no phone, no Wi-Fi, no calculator, nothing like that. Just you and the exam for the amount of time that the exam takes in real life. Um, after you, you've done this, you go through it and you check the answers and you give yourself a real accurate grade, which is what you would have gotten if, um, if this was the actual thing. Following this, there's four possible results you can, you can get. You either passed it, which is a score above 90. If you are well above 90, you should be fine. And I wouldn't recommend you buy anything because you don't need it. Just keep the mentality of how you approach this test during the real test, spend the same amount of time, blah, 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 blah. There's another scenario where you struggled with time management. If you feel like you struggled with time management, then I would recommend you do other past papers during the, like in the same conditions, but now like timing yourself per question. Um, if it's still not enough, then you can apply the same solutions to this that I'm gonna talk about in two seconds. The third result you might obtain is that you struggled with the academic literacy part. If this is the case, I wouldn't recommend you buy anything either. You can literally Google C2, C1 reading comprehension um, past papers, lectures, exercises, blah, 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 blah. And of, like hundreds of thousands of exercises, just like the human will pop up that you can do for free. You just need to read more, Im improve your voc vocabulary, and like be able to maybe read faster if you struggled with time. Number four is that you struggled with the logic part of the test. If this is the case, I recommend you buy the UK cat book and you do the exercises in the UK cat book. Start, depending on how badly or how well you did, you started off really badly, then I would recommend you do the exercises firstly, just to get a hang of how they are. No time, no pressure, help yourself out with a calculator, whatever you need. But then as the you get closer and closer to the exam dates, I would recommend that you start timing yourself, trying to do it in exam conditions and, and like slowly like progressively overload how hard you are doing these, um, or the, the difficulty of what you're doing until it, it's very similar to what the exam is going to be like at the end. The final result you might encounter is that you honestly struggle with more than one of these areas. You struggle with the reading and time or the logic and the reading, whatever it may be. If you struggle with more than one of these or you were bare, if you're really close to 90 or just below, I think personally, if you are able to and willing to afford a 410 euro course, I think you should consider buying the course because it is your best bet of improving over time. Obviously, if you can't afford it or if you don't wanna buy it, you don't need to buy it to be able to get in. Most people didn't buy a course and are still in. This is only if you have really struggled or are really struggling with finding resources or you've tried a lot of resources and it isn't working. Only then in like extreme cases do I recommend buying such an expensive course and it's only because I really trust it. But uh, anyway, that's it. Thank you guys for watching. Subscribe and I'll see you guys next week.